very excited for this show and also because it's almost the weekend and we're doing a lot well i'm doing a lot of things during the weekend so i'm excited about it but today we're going to be talking about two things and one is history what we've learned in history from you know from high school college and also through the media which is a really big form of how you know, our current generation and the younger generation are getting their, you know, information, you know, the news and all of that stuff. And we'll also be talking about events and places we like to go in Marin County and maybe outside of Marin County because I don't think we have a lot of things here. <laughs> With that being said, I do have an icebreaker question. And my icebreaker question is, who is your favorite artist that you're listening to right now? Singer, I meant artist, singer. Um, I would say Lewis Kaplan. I think that's how you say his last name. Lewis Kaplan? I don't think I know him. No? No. Or, okay, there's two Lewises that I, that I really like right now. I just know Lewis Kaplan's last name, but I don't know the other Lewis. And I've actually, I've been thinking he's having a concert soon in San Francisco. Oh, cool. Like later in the month. And I'm thinking, and there's still tickets and I'm thinking if I should go... Because it's like I know a lot of his songs, but then I don't know. Because sometimes I don't know if those are the songs he's going to be singing. Just because it's his older um, albums. That oh, I like. that you like? Yeah. Oh, okay. Maybe, so I don't I'm think really I've heard of him. about it. I don't think I've heard of him. Really? No, or, Lewis? You I feel like have. I have, I'm really bad with artist names. Yeah, because horrible like, this. both of them have like two or three really popular songs that like most people would have heard already or like heard on the radio. Okay. Yeah cool <laughs> what is yours <laughs> um i actually have two i'm really into um cold play right now i don't know why i've been really connecting to their music but because of a recent project that i've been doing i really went and dived into musica i'm probably saying this wrong but regional is that the from Mexico, is regional is that how you say? It? Because we were um, editing. Genre. It's a, yeah, it's a genre. So I have been. I don't have a favorite artist, but that's the genre that I've been listening to mm -hmm. currently. And I didn't think I would because when I was smaller, I thought those songs were not good. I'm guilty of that. Wait, what type of songs? Is um, so I think it should. Is it falls into like Grupo Firme? and oh. like peso pluma like mm -hmm. i think that's around their genre i might be wrong you guys i don't know but because of a project i've been really going into more like spanish music and diving mm -hmm. in and like finding very old songs so i've been listening to those lately but i don't know it's just because of a project that i've been working on but coldplay has been on replay right now in my playlist mm. yeah i started listening to um peso pluma kind of Ish. like i randomly i'm like oh i kind of want to play him <laughs> well i don't know much about like the genre music because again um i would say i'm more of like a i don't know what type of genre i'm i really like but i'm not really into or i haven't really dived like dived in mm -hmm. although let me say i've been really into the stories that they're trying to tell with their albums um, like I, I, like every artist like when they well not every artist but certain art artists um they have like this whole background story of um their albums and how they create it <laughs> just like hit my <laughs> so i've been really into that and just kind of listening to their background and and it's been really fun mm -hmm. but yeah i just wanted to know you know kind of like, <laughs> kind of like that a little ice for here yeah well, yeah, so we're going to get started on talking more about history and kind of what's been going on and with like what we've learned and kind of the things that have as we we've grown older, what are things that we've kind of like, huh, that's not the reality of what we were taught. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, do you want to start it off or do you want me to? Um, whichever I could start off. You can start off. Um, so. I kind of want to date back to what I've learned. So I remember in eighth grade, I don't know when you learned this, but I learned it in elementary, but I learned it like deeper in eighth grade. I forgot what type of history class it was. I had a really good history teacher. Her name is Miss Ox. I still remember her, but she moved to Hawaii that year. Um, but we were kind of taught, taught about slavery a little 
And do you remember Rosa Parks? Where she Rosa Parks? Yes, I yeah, do. Where she's the first woman to ever stand up or like not move her from her seat to give it to a white person. Mm -hmm. And I actually learned this from that teacher. And I know a lot of other people probably have only heard that Rosa Parks was the first woman to do that. But I learned it from my um, from Miss Ox that she actually wasn't the first lady to do that the first lady was elizabeth jennings graham and she was living in new york city and became the first black woman to ride white buses only horse in a streetcar in 1855 so this is a little before rosa parks and i've I remember I've, I've like talked about something like this before with other people were like, oh, what's you, what have you learned in history? And like, we kind of like see if it's true or not. And a lot of people have only heard the Rosa Parks version of it, but no one really hears the other version. Yeah, I, I'm going to add on to what you commented on that because that is a huge thing. I read a book that talked about habits. Um, if you've read the book, you probably know what I'm talking about, but it's, it's, it talks about habits and how a habit is placed and how it's built. And they talked about Rosa Parks. And I, I was oh, thought, really? yeah, it was so interesting because they, they said that this exact same thing. I read it through that book where it said Rosa Parks was not the first, you know, black mm -hmm. women to get up and um, in a, on a bus. But the reason why Rosa Parks made an impact was because she was involved in the community so much mm -hmm. that it affected a lot of people's um, like personal lives mm -hmm. which created this wave of um effect mm -hmm. and so it, the way it connected with habits it's like if you have a habit like so locked down in automatic mode when something interrupts it you will you will be so in shock and surprised i'm probably not explaining it the best but if you read the book um it explains about mm -hmm. that and i learned that through through the book that rosa parks wasn't Mm -hmm. actually the first one do you remember when you learned about rosa parks in his school i don't remember i think mm -hmm. maybe in world history no not world history <laughs> <laughs> i'm thinking of the of it was in high school i'm pretty sure uh, in high school i yeah. learned it in, in middle school but i forgot what my hit that history class was called because i know it's just like history, history but like that's it had what, maybe that's why i think world history because i think it was a company because uh mm -hmm. middle school combines everything oh yeah that's and then in high school you have um Freshman is world history. I'm pretty sure. I know. In, or you went to a different high school. You went to Sierra I remember in SR, history wasn't required the first year at SR. You have to oh. take it. I don't know if it's changed, but when I was there, um, no no freshmen were really taking history unless they like really wanted to. Oh, it wasn't required till like sophomore year. That you mm, interesting. To. Yeah, I never took history in my freshman year. Into my sophomore year, I took history and then my junior year. Okay. Yeah. I took two history classes. I took ethnic studies when I was a junior for comm. And then I took in my like at school, I took, uh, we were learning a little similar like Chicano, but a mix of Chicano um, history and something else. I forgot. It was like half and half. We would do like sections of things. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I learned a lot. Oh, a really, ah, oh, damn it. Actually, wait, never mind. I'm going to try to find the book that we read and it explains like literally every big event in history. I don't know if you know what it's called. It's like a really big book. No, I, I don't think I know. It was like an assignment throughout the whole semester where we'd have to like do little work or little assignments based on each chapter. But it talks a lot about the slavery with um, Asian Americans, Latinos. It's not just on based on one. Um, but yeah, and I think w one important thing that I remember was the railroads. They weren't, um, they, a lot of, I remember in school, you're kind of taught about the, you know, the railroads. Or is that what it's called? I feel like there's a name for it. You know, I'm the railroads in California that pass through. I know what you're talking yeah. about, but I think you're right that there is a it's, a name for that time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was mean, looking at me like, no. <laughs> um, okay, anyways, but basically in school, it's promoted a lot that the whites did it, but I think now it's kind of not as much, but before it was where the white people build those railroads and they, they made 
Asian Americans build the entire railroads. And during that time, they there's like a photograph taken of um, American men standing right in front and claiming that they had built it when there was like uh, you could see like an Asian person in the background standing there. And then it was kind of like deep bunked or something i'm sorry i'm not really explaining no i actually gonna i'm gonna add on to that as well when we went to the short documentary at the mill valley film festival Mm -hmm. there was this short documentary about an um i think she's asian american the um, the pro the protagonist and uh she went back and traced back actually in tahoe um, part of that where they did the railroad and they went into an area and they found like um, broken um, broken pieces of items in that land that connected back to her history, her mm-hmm. background of like Asians, um, w- ha- like a huge portion created the railroads. Mm-hmm. And so that mini documentary was very eye-opening for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like I learned more through like history I learned more about history through the people mm-hmm. than through school. Um, schools in, well, at least from, in my experience, and it might be different for others, but history was not, was very sugar-coated mm-hmm. to make America look great. Mm-hmm. And the truth is, you know, we live in a country where we have so much opportunity. I will, uh, for me, I've gotten a lot of opportunity, but I know that there's a huge dark history behind a lot of the things that are currently placed right now Mm -hmm. and um you know certain things that we were kind of not told full or we had they weren't telling us the full story for example rose parks um the railroads i would say also for for the u.s and you Mm -hmm. know latin america for me was understanding like that i'm that how would i say this For example, Mex- uh, Tex- is it Texas that they used to say, that, like, you know how people claim, like, oh, this is America's land? But, oh, you know, back, back, New- back in the Mexico's. day. Is it, Me- it was Mexico's. It was Mexico's. Yeah, I'm right on the right. It was Mexico. I remember that there were, they had a war, like a war in that state. I remember learning about this in my classes. Yeah. Um, I forgot there's an, the name for that war, but it was a war between them and then some Mexicans. There was a time where a lot of them chose to go on the white people's side because they knew they were going to lose and they didn't want to be killed. So they went over to that side and they fought in Texas territory and then they ended up winning. And so yeah, they but that land, that up. land was Me- Mexico's. Mm-hmm. So for example, growing up, like I don't really understand that. And some people would say like, um, I don't want to say it cause then it's very, but you know how people say like, Oh, go back to your land. You don't belong here. And then a lot of those people say, well, actually this we've <laughs> always been here. So, so stuff like that growing up, I've kind of, um, mm-hmm. understood, understood more based on the people and their stories Mm -hmm. um they really explained to you even in 2008 you know Mm -hmm. the big uh um when the economy crashed Mm -hmm. the more i got out of the great depression yeah the 2008 uh, depression i learned more about that from the people that actually experienced it and those who have like families who experienced it Mm -hmm. i learned more than actually what i've i've read Mm -hmm. and i think it's it's um you know, if you read outside sources of school, I think you learn a lot more, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. I don't know if, if that came out. No, I, I what you saying. <laughs> My brain is, like, processing. <laughs> I'm like that, too. Wait, yeah. I just... It's the American Railroads. It's just called the American Railroad. American Railroad. I don't think I, I've heard. And basically, just, like, the the Europeans were just claiming that they had built it during that time. They didn't give any credit to the Chinese or Asians. And even though they did most of the work yeah, they did. and it was, it took them like years to build it just because they were using it to transport very big, like iron and steel and stuff like that. That's what it was used for so that they could sell it easier instead of having, there was no cars then or anything. So they had, they needed something, but yeah. Oh, and kind of talking okay i'm moving to something else now (laughs) it just because you talking about texas kind of reminded me of um we're right near napa and Mm -hmm. sonoma county and i don't know if you knew this but i i learned about this not recently but um a while ago where 
uh, sorry, I just can't really hear myself. Um, where in Napa, the wine countries there were all, maybe you've known about this, but all the wine countries there were owned by Mexicans and mm. they were all taken from white people when they came here. But this was like years ago, like all that land, it, they're not Mexicans, but like Hispanic people, they owned all these lands. But there's like one specific story oh, on I a family. I don't know the family's name. I'm not, <laughs> I know like details of history, but not specific names. But there is a family, it's in the book that I was reading. There's this family where the Mexicans like would come knocking at their door saying to give me the land and stuff. A lot of them would say no. So then they would end up bringing more people and they would like, basically enslave everyone there and take away their land really? and that's how they got their land and then i feel like it's just crazy to think about that a lot of mexicans could have had that land still and could have grown their wine and everything and then instead of the whites being like so rich they could have been more rich but instead they their ancestors got kicked out of their own land which happens a lot but it's just yeah. interesting because it's right close like near us yeah i i I did not know that, but I thought for a second you were talking about Native Americans. <laughs> no, not not Na- no. That, it's not Native but, Americans. It's I'm pretty sure it's Mexicans. I don't okay. think because was California a part of was part of Mexico, right? Or my, that might be wrong. I don't on. know. I I can't. Uh, but <laughs> I don't remember that. But all of like you know what's near Mexico. Yeah. You there's a lot of um, you know it was very. A lot of people who who lived in 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 those lands before they it became you know Americas. Um, I would also add on to like, I think what we're doing is really um, kind of expressing what we've learned and also mm-hmm. what we what we learned, what they taught us, and what we've learned doing our, our own, own on our own. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna add to similar to what your your about the family is. For me, it's is learning a lot about Native Americans. Mm-hmm. Um, I did. I've done a lot of work here with indigenous communities as well. And one of the things I've learned, for example, is the history of Thanksgiving, which we've talked about it. Like in back then, and I hope now that they've changed the the perspective of, of Thanksgiving for, for families like Thanksgiving. Oh, and Columbus Day, like the history of those uh, days. Mm-hmm. Um, it's interesting how, how different people celebrate it. Mm-hmm. For the natives on Columbus Day, it's a lot of... Um, like uh, a moment to acknowledge their their people who have who have passed because um, when Columbus came, a lot of the you know murders of Native Americans uh, you know came to be mm-hmm. and just in general people because they were fighting for land and all. The other part is Thanksgiving. Like, uh, you know, if you talk to, to... There's a big history. Huh? Yeah. You know, you know, Native Americans don't really celebrate Thanksgiving in the way. And it's changed over the years. Like, for my family, we, we just gather to eat dinner. But there's no reason. It's really just the time that my family gets off. Mm-hmm. Everybody, my, my parents, siblings. And so we just get together and just have a nice dinner. But, you know, the other thing that I was going to mention is, um, man, it left. <laughs> As I hate mentioned. when that happens. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Native Americans. That's a huge thing for for me. Um, you kind of. I have always thought that they are gone. They left because they're still here. Because mm-hmm. when growing up, because mm-hmm. they would say, "Oh, this is what happened, and this is transitioned," and they showed us a lot of images of um, how Native Americans kind of transformed over the years from their traditional clothing to going to school to then being you know a mixed mixed all together later on when i went to uh utah and and new mexico to do community work out there i realized the condi- like where they were mm-hmm. and learning the history that i learned during school that oh they made treaties mm-hmm. like they made uh, agreements that uh, okay we're gonna take this land you stay here mm-hmm. and in my head was like oh at least you know they did a good a good thing they gave them land still but when i actually mm-hmm. visited the lands it's very dry it's very segregated and you know listening to the small the pe- yeah listening to the people's stories and i was like what and doing my research i realized that yeah that was true but it wasn't the full story. Like the land that they were given to them wasn't 
you know, the same as as what they had. Yeah, and it was crazy how they've they've changed and all. So that was a big thing for me is mm-hmm. is realizing that. Mm-hmm. I feel like when we're taught about in school about native americans it's very very sugar-coated or it's like oh they had like like the europeans and native americans fought they lost and that was really it so then they ended up taking it but it was like more like with the native americans it was like a bloodbath with oh yeah a huge bloodbath where a lot of them lost their lives when it was their territory and everything they like I think it was just because Columbus like founded something new they he thought I don't know it's just crazy because he thought he had like the right to like take it over and then they ran into the natives and then they ended up not like agreeing I don't know <laughs> sorry no no I think I don't know why I say no no but you're you're on to something and mm-hmm. and that's why it's important for the youth to take in what you've learned but also be curious and if Mm -hmm. you have questions you know ask those uncomfortable questions and not to to bring back hate but really to bring um understanding Mm -hmm. and knowing you know the opportunities we have there was a price paid for it Mm -hmm. and you you can't take back history Mm -hmm. Uh, that's something that you can do but what you can do is um acknowledge what has happened Mm -hmm. and take what you what you can to learn to learn if something comes up in the future and you need to approach it you have a way of um managing that Mm -hmm. and often that's not what what people do we that's why the common phrase of repeating history comes up Mm -hmm. because it has happened before something comes up, we're repeating it instead of kind of taking what we've learned. And especially today, there's a lot of things going on in the world. There's a lot of um, unfortunate, you know, bloodbaths going on ev- throughout the whole world. Mm-hmm. And um, it's still going on. Yeah, it's really hard to to just I think there's one narrative always given, mm-hmm. but within that narrative there can be questions and it's okay to ask those questions and find those answers. And then, you know, with that, you can, you know, choose what to do with what you've learned. But that's our message is to really just ask questions and learn more about what's going on. Yeah. Back to you. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I feel like, I feel like in history with native Americans, I don't think we were taught much and I don't think I really, explored much outside of that much which I probably should just to get a fuller concept because I know like what I was taught in school is definitely not the full concept just because I've always heard more to it but I've never really dived deeper into it which I probably should yeah and here in the bay there was we have a lot of native yeah. uh, tribes and the, like a lot of the, the land that we're on were native tribes. Yeah, I think the closest is the Miwok tribe. Yeah, to us. that's the most common one we hear, but there are actually on There's MCM's... The o- Owa? Owna? O- I'm not Owna. very good. I, I don't remember think names, I'm pronouncing But on right. MCM's Instagram page, there is a, a, a post that we've made that lists a couple of the of the tribes that were here in the lands that we're on. So mm-hmm. if you want to get more information, I would definitely check that out. Okay, I will. <laughs> um, okay, I kind of want to date back a little to California. Okay. A ca- a ca- a <laughs> <laughs> I just I just stuttered. Okay, um, <laughs> a history on California that I honestly did not know about. Uh, you remember the gold rush? I don't remember it, but you I know. <laughs> like, I wasn't there. I- <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you weren't there, but I mean, do you remember learning about I've, it? I've learned about it, yes. Okay. <laughs> You're like, I weren't, I wasn't there. Okay. Um, the gold rush. You remember that? Yes. California gold rush in San, or in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. That wasn't actually the first gold rush because that gold rush began in 1848. And there was another okay. one called the California gold rush of nine, or 1799. And it was discovered or discovery of a 17 pound gold nugget by a 12 year old boy named Conrad Reed, Conrad Reed. And that was the very first discovery of gold. And then they had soon 
found more within within the state of the North Carolina region. Hmm. I didn't know that. I didn't know that, that either. Interesting. I've no. I don't think I've ever been taught that at all. I <laughs> just learned about it, and I just thought it was interesting because I remember we had like a whole like concept on the California Gold Rush, where it's like the first time like gold was found, and everyone rushed to California to try and find gold and then get rich and everything. Is there still gold here? I don't know i i'm not very <laughs> probably like deep inside mountains or something yeah there's a Ooh. lot of history in, in really in everything there's history mm-hmm. from you know the actual um we should go gold hunting <laughs> <laughs> no it's it's crazy to to learn more about the history of you know not just our own where we live but you know, if you go out of your bubble and learn more and more, there's a lot of history that yeah, it can be really hard to to read and to just explore. You know that th- those areas it can be really hard because humans aren't perfect, mm-hmm. and we have horrible we do horrible horrible things, and it's really hard. Like coming from me, that I I do like to read his like stuff about history mm-hmm. and. It's heartbreaking. Like there are times where I I cry saying, how is this actually real? Mm -hmm. And it's even sadder that that still happens today, that it's, it's unfortunate, but. And all the, all like, I feel like I just don't understand like why they like in school were not really taught the real thing. Mm -hmm. And it's like, kind of why is that? something that we're not really taught and we have to go out of our way to actually learn about it but it's like we're going to school for a reason to learn about it so i mean i would understand as like an elementary they're gonna sugarcoat it because we're kids yeah i understand that but it's like when we're in high school we're old enough to like know about what what we what our country our ancestors have gone through and not just like have it sugar-coated and not really knowing what has actually happened because i feel like the more we're informed about everything the more we'll all be able to not repeat history in a way and like to learn from it to help our children's our children learn and embrace our ancestors in our past so yeah yeah um i would agree i think that there is a big part that needs to be based mm-hmm. on like your our age and understanding mm-hmm. but as we grow you know we should be really i know it's hard to also be like hey this is what you know for example this is what america did it's really kind of hard to like man i, I i'm I from live there. there i live there <laughs> but it, it's important again to not repeat history mm-hmm. and so that no like lives aren't don't pay the price that are unnecessary. There's this quote I read um, that someone had posted on, on IG and I found it so interesting because I didn't understand it. And um, I'm going to read it. And I don't know exactly if this is where it came from. So okay. I'd, I'm going to say based on Google where it's from. But okay. if it's not, it's not my fault. Um, <laughs> where is a place where the young people the, w- wait hold up war is a place where the young kill one another without knowing or hating each other because of the decisions of old people who know and hate each other without killing each other mm. eric hart eric hartman mm. it's really deep that just reminds me of kind of the ukraine world world i mean war sorry not world ukraine world war why can't i say <laughs> the war in ukraine just because it's really like the two that hate each other it's really complicated in war it's like you're going in to just kind of fight for your country in a way but it's like you're not hating the other person that you're fighting against yeah isn't that crazy yeah when i read that i i repeated i repeated and read it a couple of times because i was i was truly you know i was like man that's crazy and it's it's actually what's happened in history and in know throughout decades and decades Mm -hmm. and it's crazy so again we are halfway through the show Mm -hmm. and i want to do kind of end the section with saying oh i was gonna i wanted to add one more thing 
quickly for us to talk about. Okay. One more thing. One big thing that we're just taught about is slavery. And, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, slavery, as you guys may know, we learned about it maybe in eighth grade and in elementary and whatnot. And a lot of us just know it as Columbus was, or when Columbus came to America, that's when slavery began. But slavery didn't actually begin then. It was, or he came in 1942 to discover the new world. And then a lot of people also, another date that a lot of people think it, slavery started was 1619. But in reality, that's not when slavery started. It dates back like 5,000 years ago, Egyptian times, the 4th century BC. And um, as a lot of people might know it as a white phenomenon, um, it's not a white person. Like white people didn't create slavery just because we're only really taught about slavery in America. And white people did not create slavery. It was created by everyone within different skin tones different cultures and it's something that we're not taught about like the one thing that i was just taught about in school was like white people invented slavery it started when uh, christopher columbus came to um the new world and he did all this and then he like captured slaves and everything but in reality a lot of black people sold other black people to columbus and their people and then everyone and it kind of just like dates back like thousands of years ago probably like farther back and even now there's still slaves and according to some people that there's 700,000 slaves today still in africa which is a lot and it's more than um how many slaves are actually brought to america so it's not a white people and then white people also had were the first people to actually put an end to slavery. Don't know the exact year, <laughs> but they were the first ones to end slavery in America, not in other countries, but the first ones in actual history and every in any country to end slavery. White people did that. America, in America. I think. In Amer- in with- but not, it's kind of like more for everywhere just because in other countries now still have slavery and still... Um, they wait what was i saying okay in other countries there's still slavery and there's still and even back then it was still going on even though in america was still it ended but yeah and another thing is that white people still or no the slavery now is more is not in a white person's country it's more in other races countries <laughs> what I'm trying to say. I'm a little confused, but I think I think I know where you're 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 going go with <laughs> that. This. Ending of that was not good, <laughs> but that was I think like answer. like I mentioned before. I think the message that we're really trying to send out is um, be curious to to know more about. We'll have not just take one thing and and run with it Mm -hmm. i think it's being curious and understanding because like you said slavery is such a huge topic and it it actually hasn't been it hasn't fully been gone there's different types of of, um slavery uh there's a blank slavery there's um uh it's just so many things Mm -hmm. that we think are are gone because sometimes we can be what we see on social media it's very you know we live or what we live but the reality is those things still are happening in, in many other countries. Mm-hmm. Um, many countries, you know, it's it's unfortunate, mm-hmm. but I really do suggest to the youth to do research and learn more. And again, like I said, it's for, for you to take in the information and it's mm-hmm. what you do with it after. Yeah. And the whole thing is not to blame other people, but mm-hmm. really just saying it's hard to really, like I said, read history, know the dark truth about it. Mm-hmm. But when you do, you know, it makes you more aware mm-hmm. and knowledgeable. And when someone t- miss, you know, gives you information that's not correct, mm-hmm. it's it's for you to say, oh, well, I know the history mm-hmm. and, and, and keep it to, you know, to so that you can grow. Yeah. Um, yeah. With that being said, guys, I know this this is really hard as well. Like it gets me a bit emotional to talking about a lot of these topics because it is hard. Um, and but it, they're important. So with that, we're gonna transition into a couple of PSAs that we have. 
One is this Saturday, tomorrow, we have our annual Day of the Dead event at the Albert J. Burrow Community Center. It's going to start at 3 p.m. all the way until 9.30 p.m. If you are available and have nothing in your calendar, I definitely suggest you guys to come. We're going to have art workshops, um, performances, like uh, traditional dancing from Aztec dancing, uh, the flor, flor, flor something, flor, clori. No, <laughs> I'm messing up name. Um, the the I, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm forgetting. We're going to have those. We're going to have a performance of um, Aria Agresiva, who will be the closing um, performers of the night. We're going to have dance, food, a walking procession, altar viewing. So the community is um, coming in to create their own altar for their families. Some of them are for their family. Some of them are dedicated for other other. Um, themes and they're beautiful they take a lot of time so I suggest you all to co to come tomorrow and we also as always we won't be having open mic uh, for November or December due to MCM has a very complicated scheduling and with that we we do have the toy drive that's coming up and we if you or anyone knows who can um, donate a gift for a child for this holiday contact us via tay radio marin on, on ig and ask more information how you can support or if you're in need of a toys for your siblings um or any family member you know you can also um contact us via our social media platforms so with that am i missing anything i'm gonna say no no uh, we're gonna transition to just talking about a different type of activities and events that are happening in the Bay or in Marin County that we enjoy and that we recommend for all of you to to do. Mm -hmm. So do you want to start? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think a very common one is Mount Tam, hiking Mount Tam or just driving up Mount Tam. I think it's really peaceful going through the the woods and just driving in those loops um mount tam at the top it's really cold so make sure to bring a jacket even though it might be like hot out but once you get to the top and you're like walking outside it's pretty cold um it's really pretty you can see a lot of the bay from there and i really like it. i was just gonna mention mount tam for one i have like a list i don't know how you do you want to I want to say Mount Tam too. Um, it's one of my favorite places to go, but I do want to say if you go up and eat there, be respectful of bringing back your trash. Mm -hmm. um, as I've been going more, there's more people going, and I often find you know trash everywhere, and it, it breaks my heart because you know I always cautious. you know being cautious for you know it's it's our home, but we also live with other creatures and beautiful animals so being mindful that hey this is um their home as well yeah. mount tam is my favorite i like to go during sunset uh, but sunrises are really best. beautiful you can also take different hikes if you you know are having a hard day and um just need you know during the weekend or when you have time definitely hiking up there is really really fresh it's you can take a lot of um fresh air and the views are really nice um I would suggest you don't need to go buy a sandwich. You can pack a sandwich at home, take a couple of snacks, a backpack water. And that way, when you are on your hike, you can, you know, sit down and enjoy the view. Um, th another thing for me that I like to go to is, um, como se llama? I'm blanking. <laughs> but do you want to go on your list? <laughs> I'm thinking. Yeah. I don't know where you're talking about. Um, my second one is I don't know if you've been the ink. Have you been to the Inkwells? The what? The Inkwells? No, where's that? In heading towards Fairfax, going if you're like it's as if you're going to the Samuel P. Taylor Park. Going to Fairfax. Have you been to the Samuel P. Taylor Park? No. Taylor Park, yeah. Yeah, the Taylor Park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Go. I recommend that one. Yeah, that one. Okay, we two of them over there. If you don't want to drive that far deep into um, 
or heading all the way to the Samuel 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 P. Taylor Park. If you don't want to drive that far down, you can just go to the Inkwells. It's a lot more ahead of it or before it. Um, y- there's not an exact address to search up the Inkwells. And it will pop up and it will give you the directions. It doesn't give you exact directions or like it just gives you coordinates. Um, But you will find it. It's kind of like on the side of the road and it has its own parking lot too. The Inkwells is just a place more for the summer, not really for right now. Um, It's you can jump off of a like a little cliff. Oh, the water like water. Yeah, it's like a waterfall kind of water swimming little pond. little pound pond pond, uh, pond pond um it's really nice i i mean i would personally let me tell you a story actually <laughs> of when i was there um i went there with my family and my friends like two years ago maybe and i had this i had already jumped off this cliff thing and i wanted to go again and i went and everything was fine I went and I like went in my feet first. I jumped like pencil dive and then everything's fine. I felt my head like a little like, like, oh, I kind of like smacked into the water too hard. But I'm like, oh, it's whatever. And everything was fine with me. (laughs) And then once we got in the car and we were like on our way back home was when my head started like pounding like no other. Like I've never felt this pain before. And it wasn't, um, it wasn't, it wasn't like, it didn't hurt like a headache or like if I had a migraine, like it hurt, like my head felt like it was like straight, like just plumping. And I thought like, oh, I was like, I was bleeding or something, but nothing, it kept getting worse. I couldn't hear on this side. I think it's this side of my ear. Um, I always forget which one because it's, I'm fine now, but, um, I couldn't hear at all and, I just like it was weird like it just hurt so bad I was just like crying and yelling because of the pain but we were also like so far because it is kind of like going a little far in and I was just crying and then my mom was like what happened and I was like in the back just crying yelling I'm like I don't know I'm like it felt it's like the worst pain I have ever felt but um we ended up dropping my friend off and then my mom took me to the hospital and I was so scared. I like I stopped hearing, and then we got mm-hmm. there, and then my eardrum my eardrum uh, bursted. That's what happened. Oh. And because of the water pressure, I guess like it it like kind of just like broke it, and I couldn't hear for like two weeks or some like a two weeks or something. Really? And yeah, they just gave me uh, medication for it, and then they said that. <laughs> It's not it's now. You not. don't want me to go. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, be careful. I'm trying oh, to give you guys a warning. I was, like, <laughs> wait, I was a bit confused. You're telling me about this place, and then you're like, "Wait, I got her." <laughs> no, but it's like it, it's like so rare for that to happen. I because it's like I don't know what happened because like I just went in normally. Like I was literally just doing a pencil dive, like anyone else. And I've never heard of anyone else getting hurt there. And like a lot of people go there. So it's like, I think I, was, I just had really bad luck in that. And yeah, my eardrum just bursted. If you, I've never had that happen. Have, if you've ever had your eardrum burst, painful. it's painful. It's basically you're the eardrum literally like bursting in your ear. So then your ear just gets like tapado. And then there is like a bit of blood. So like the doctor had to clean it. Oh my God. It was so bad. And I thought the whole time it felt like my brain, like something was wrong with like my head head, Mm -hmm. but it wasn't thankfully, but I was so scared. I thought I was literally going to die because then my aunt came with us to the hospital and she was telling me it's COVID or something. They're going to kill you. (laughs) (laughs) And she got me just like 10 times more scared. She's like, she's like, what? it was during COVID time. Oh, okay. You know how there's those myths around saying that doctors are killing people with COVID or something? Oh, yeah. There's a lot of a conspiracy lot of theories that yeah. happen during the and pandemic. My aunt was really into those things. And she was like, she's like, whatever you do, don't say you have COVID. Don't say you're sick. <laughs> it's just your ear. Oh, wow. I didn't know um, that. Yeah, but, but that area that you're talking about where if you continue going down, um, well, going there, there's beautiful um, coffee shops that you can stop by there. Wait, there's what? A, yeah, there's a coffee shop that On Annalie, that road? Yeah, like going there, Annalie oh. and I went there. Um, if you guys want to like a picnic, 
and go for a walk. There's a lot of beautiful areas to walk there. Yeah. I highly recommend it. Another place for me is Point Reyes. Um, it's for me one of the things that I enjoy when I'm having a really stressful day is um, drives. I love to to drive and just go and into places where away from the like the noise and Point Reyes is definitely one going down there and just driving and all the way like going towards the lighthouse there's a beach there um i don't get in the water because I'm, i'm scared of the ocean but just walking around the sand is really nice um also i would say another i would say near um <clears throat> near point reyes if you're going wait no i'm thinking sorry i was kind of thinking of point reyes but i was i'm actually thinking of the headlands Um, Headlands is also really nice for drives going yeah, up there, the windy, like windy roads. If you want, if you want to go, if you want to have like a nice hike, but leads you to a beach point, right? Or not, sorry, not point right. Going to Headlands, if you park up there and it, you know how like if you park up there, there's like a trail for you to walk. If you just keep walking like straight all the, all the way down, like just keep going straight. And I think there's like a turn, but don't take the turn. Like when you're walking, just keep going all the way straight. It leads you to a beach. I have no clue what the beach is called. I was like trying to look for it, but I don't know what the beach is called. But if you go down that road, it's like a beautiful beach. You see the, you see the Golden Gate or not the Golden Gate Bridge, just the regular. No, sorry. Yeah. The Golden Gate Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> you see the golden gate bridge and it's and it's like super close to you because the beach is like right next to it it's like kind of like a hidden beach in a way but it's not really hidden but i've never really heard of people walking that and it's just really pretty you just have to park up at the headlands i would literally just walk down there's a lot of beautiful places for like free things i would well i would say free things because i don't know about parking but to hike around here for example near the the where the mill valley uh, library is if you go up there you can take the stairs and it takes you to hike up mount tam and there's also places in novato that you can go oh my god i'm blanking on the names of these places for bike rides i would say mm. I was I'm gonna i was gonna say china camp but i've heard china camp is getting really crowded so i don't know but My dad used to take us biking when we were kids there. It was our, one of my favorite spots to go biking there. I don't know how it is now. It is. Yeah, it is pretty crowded going there. Is it, is it crowded? And the, some of the trails are a little narrow. So it's like if you're walking, oh. you really got to go to the side to let the bikers go. And sometimes there's like a group of like groups of bikers going. So you got to be. Careful. My suggestion for anyone who is look, looking for places It's to search up trails near me, mm-hmm. and um, that is how I've like found places to watch sunsets and just spending time with with mm-hmm. you know my brothers, where we go and and we just like again we pack snacks or we just like go to Seven Eleven and buy like mm-hmm. th- things from there and just a good time. I was gonna say food, but I think. That food can be very, very expensive in Marin. And so I'm not going to share those because, um, you know, it's not it's not very, uh, like, financially. It's uh-huh. It can get very pricey in Marin County. Yeah. Um, I have more. Oh, you have more? Okay, <laughs> I continue. I have, like, way more. Um, uh, another good one. I went there when it was closed, but I don't know what the hours are. To be honest, it doesn't say it online. It's like kind of different. You just kind of have to go. But it's in the, you're going to the headlands called Point Bonita Lighthouse. Have you heard of the lighthouse? I think, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's really pretty. There. And you're, it's not like too much of a hike, honestly. So it's kind of, you, you just want to go to have a nice view and there's the lighthouse there and you can go into the light or like into the tunnel of the lighthouse to the end of it. And I believe you can go in the lighthouse. It might cost you something but when i last went it was closed so like going through the tunnel of the lighthouse you couldn't go through but it was still really pretty and you just see when you look below you see like the waves crashing against the walk of the rocks it's just really pretty it's not that's not too much of a hike it's more like if you just want to have like a nice view mm-hmm. and there's like a lot of rocks that you could sit on so just like if you just want to talk with someone or something like that um another i love this is probably like my favorite trail that i've ever been on in Marin um it's called the Tennessee Valley Trailhead 
and it's in Mill Valley. You're going towards Mill Valley. It's honestly not that far in driving wise, but walking, just know it's a long trail. It's like probably, depends how, how fast you walk. It's like an hour or more trail and it leads you to a really pretty beach or you could continue going up these hills and these rocks. There's like different trails that go different ways, but the main trail that I like going on that leads you to the beach is like an hour long. So if you really want like a really nice, good walk and it's all a trail, there's like a little slight hill, but that's it. For the most part, it's only a trail and it's really pretty. And I've seen a bobcat there and I've seen a coyote there and oh my God, the bobcat was so cute. But yeah, you would see a lot of really pretty creatures there. So that's a really good one. And then... I would say um, Alcatraz as another one. I've always wanted to go to Alcatraz, but I know it's a little pricey, so it kind of depends. I really want to go to Alcatraz, but it also like scares me. Alcatraz, have you been to Angel Island? Yeah, I have been to Angel Island. I recommend going to Angel Island. Angel Island. Mm -hmm. It's really nice. I did. I didn't know that you could camp there, but you can camp there. You can have uh, like barbecues and you should get permits for them yeah yeah i was not including those but (laughs) i would suggest those Mm -hmm. and also um another thing that i haven't done but it most like recently but i've done before and it's like kayaking and where i've done under the golden gate they the, oh. the golden gate there but there's also different lakes that's, around here if you search <laughs> that's why i don't know how i Same. got got there but i did go and um i would suggest going to lakes there's a different lakes here i have a favorite lake it's um i am blanking on the name but it's here near um phoenix lake is one of my favorite lakes where's that by it's in oh shoot where's phoenix lake it's near ken near ross ross kentfield like ross between like ross and kentfield really yeah phoenix lake is beautiful it gets pretty busy not going towards like because, fairfax um no, no it's in yeah i suggest going there you can go for a walk you can do like the whole lake you can continue on you could actually i think you can go from there all the way to mount tam like walking my mom's done it from mill valley to not mill valley she's done it from there all the way to mount tam like going mm-hmm. all the way walking. i think oh, for I think her it was I like a three-hour walk but oh wow yeah there's beautiful places where you can go and the lake is one you can't mm-hmm. swim in the lake because i think that's where also something with water involves it's really beautiful very peaceful it gets busy because the parking is not big mm-hmm. so I would say just go during a time where it's like not the afternoon where everybody is kind of off work. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, continue. <laughs> have more on your list? Uh, yeah, I do. Um, wait, I just want to mention if you're pl- if you are planning to go or want to go to Alcatraz, it is one thirty nine for adults. It's one hundred thirty nine for adults to go to Alcatraz, and um. Another one I would mention, if Alcatraz isn't a thing you want to go to, but you want to go like on a boat or something, I would suggest the ferries from anywhere. For adults, it's 14. And for youth, for 19 to 24, I believe, is $14. And for youth, um, I think it's 13 to 18, is $7. And that, I haven't been on the ferry in a long time. I really If you want to do something... Um, and explore the city an option is going to the ferry because um, parking can get crazy and it can get very expensive so going there exploring you get a nice trip on the yeah it's pretty nice (laughs) Um, just get cozied up because it does get cold cold. yeah and there's a lot more I think the one thing that I've noticed doing a little more research is is like how expensive things can be and Mm -hmm. especially um, especially for families and a lot of these are like require you to have a car because they're some of them are like far and it's like you could walk to them but it's like it would take you a really long time searching up like on the like the marine uh or the county's transit they 
if you go on their website, you can plan your trips. The wait, the what? The the transit, like the oh, uh-huh. the transit. Um, you can put like locations, the actual addresses of these places, and it'll give you routes on what to take. If you you know need public transportation, you can do that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and there's also one of the things that we haven't really talked about because i don't use it as much but the 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 smart train Mm -hmm. it that smart train takes you from san rafael is that the farthest it goes no to larksburg to larksburg all the way to santa rosa Mm -hmm. and so you can if you know you can take go to nevado there's a lot of good places to go in nevado as well Um, Mm and petaluma and uh, santa rosa and so if if you you know want to save up on gas and like paying parking and you it's can faster t- yeah you can take it um and the smart train is is we've actually done a reel with Annalie mm-hmm. where we took the smart train it, it was her first time i've been in a couple times and we also you know that was a really fun time when we kind of went and and we did a uh, 20 dollars what we can buy with twenty dollars in Marin County. I mean, I think we could do that again. <gasps> we to, should do it this time to <laughs> kind of give you guys like places where where to go and like the food. I know Javier is a big food guy. He really likes food, but we're also very cautious about like what to share mm-hmm. because it can be very pricey. Marin mm-hmm. is very pricey, and like for youth who are you know just getting started with work, it can it can get really like yeah. You can I feel like you can spend a hundred dollars in a day because (laughs) yeah because like if you think about parking and you think about Mm -hmm. food like a plate like a whole food for one person sometimes can be up to 25 Mm dollars so gets expensive yeah the theaters as well you can go to the theater um that that's i mean i like i like to watch films so you can take the smart train or the bus right it drops you off like pretty close to the theater and you just walk for For, where for the either taking smart train or transit it mm-hmm. drops you off like really close and it's probably like a five minute walk to the theaters or like i'm talking about like the nevada theaters which the nevada theater about. okay yeah yeah i would say that and then um unfortunately i, I would recommend like a bowling alley but guess what we don't have one don't anymore have yeah. so when i feel like if you take the train to like petaluma or something actually no, you'd have to drive by car. I don't really think that you would be able to go there. But another good beach is called Dylan's Beach down in Petaluma. It's a pretty far drive, but the beach is huge. Like it's Dylan, huge I've never heard about beach. that. Have you heard of Marshall's Beach? No, or Mc not McNears. No, but oh, Marshall's Beach is awesome. Oh my gosh, I know a lot of beaches. <laughs> I camped on Marshall's Beach. Oh really? And it was so pretty, but you can't. You need a permit to kind of go there, but it's like really complicated to get there most people go there by um kayaking or by boat just because it's kind of hard to get to marshall's beach but it is manageable to get there you kind of have to like hop from beaches but you need like a kayak or something and but dylan's beach is really nice you just drive there and there's just a parking fee and it's like a huge beach and it's such every time i've been there the sunset has always been beautiful yeah, my favorite is uh, the watching the sunset here in Marin is beautiful. Like all of mm. it. I, the only times I like feel like I really enjoy is on Mount Tam. Mount Tam is gorgeous. Mm-hmm. I would also say like if you're if you want to watch the sunrise, um, South Sa- Salido is a really good place to watch the sunrise because you can see the city. Mm. Um, and you can watch the sunrise. I have a video. Where in South Salido? Uh, right where all the shops are, where like the little side, side like oh. the very famous Safeway. Where Safeway? No, no, no. South Salido. Yeah, but anyways, okay. we're gonna wrap it up for this <laughs> show. I know we talked about a little bit of a uh, history and kind of things that are happening and places you guys can go during the weekend. And with that, we're gonna have um another show next week and we hope you guys can join us and we will see you all 